Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and today's news, more remains found, police appeal to former members, have your say on the RMA and much more. More human remains have been found on Farewell Spit, this time by a member of the public on Tuesday morning this week. The location of the find was near to where human remains were found a week ago, approximately 8 kilometres along Golden Bay's Farewell Spit. The parents of Dutch tourist Ken Bugars will be anxiously awaiting the results from the DNA testing of the remains found last week. Tasman police are wanting to speak to people about their experiences at the Glora Vale community on the west coast in light of recent allegations made on TV3 by former community members. The new district commander, Superintendent Karen Malthus, had this to say. In light of recent allegations in the media, we would welcome the opportunity to speak to any ex-Gloria Vale member about their experiences. I understand that it may be a difficult decision to come and speak with police. Anyone who is considering approaching police should feel confident that they will be treated professionally and with empathy by staff who are trained to deal with sensitive issues. Any information we receive will help us assess how to proceed from here. Police do not require a complaint to act, however we do need all relevant information to determine what, if any, further steps may be required. Nelson Bay's police are investigating the discovery of dumped cattle carcasses on a forestry track in the Dovedale area. The bodies of two Frisian cross yearlings were found after the weekend on the north side of Jacob's Ladder on the Thorpe Orinoco Road. Sergeant Rob Crawford said the cattle had been shot and their identification tags had been taken. The carcasses had their back legs and back stakes removed before being dumped. He said there was little doubt the animals had been poached and police would be keen to hear from anyone who has information about who might be responsible. Police would also like to identify the owner of the animals. Anyone with information about this incident or other poaching should call their local police station. Nelson MP Nick Smith is to host a Rules Reduction Task Force community meeting to allow members of the public to share their experiences of property rules and regulations that they consider to be irrelevant or unnecessary. However, there is much to consider in the proposed changes to the RMA and they go much wider than just building houses. I spoke to environmental lawyer for Forest and Bird, Sally Jepp, about the RMA and some of the changes. Sally, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, there's a meeting up at the National Party's HQ this week on the rules reduction of the RMA laws. Um, the RMA laws have had a lot of bad press lately. How do you feel about that? I think that uh, there has been some bad press and it's probably um, suited the government because it wants to change the law to, um, to put out the bad stories and um, not, not put out the good stories about the RMA. People often think of it in terms of whether it allows them to build a garage or um, how high their house can be, but they forget that it also covers rules protecting our uh, unique biodiversity, our outstanding landscapes, our coastal environment. In fact, it goes right out to 12 nautical miles of our territorial sea. So it's, um, it's really important beyond just how it affects our, um, our urban environment. And I think that there's another picture, which is that when the rules don't do their job, um, you, that really shows some of the deficiencies as well. For example, the, uh, the Kauri issue recently, which in Auckland where property developers were able to cut down a Kauri tree that was hundreds of years old um, because the council had allowed it under the, um, some previous RMA reforms, that really showed how much people care about controls mm. under the Resource Management Act. So. Um this meeting on the rule, it's a rules reduction task force, how do you think that um, fits in with the broader reforms that are proposed? Well I think really it's probably a bit of PR to, um, to underlie and, and to foster this idea that the Resource Management Act is a whole bundle of unnecessary rules. Um, every rule in a plan in New Zealand has been through a process where it has to be assessed for, to ensure that it's the most efficient and effective way of achieving the, the aims of the rule. And that process is public. Um, anybody can be, in, be involved in it by making a submission and turning up to a hearing and calling evidence if they want to. Um, so I'd be very surprised if there really are a large number of unnecessary rules. Having said that, I mean, if they really don't serve a purpose, then, then there's no, there is no reason for them to be there. But I think that whether a rule serves a purpose is often in the eye of the beholder. If you don't understand the purpose of that rule, then it appears unnecessary to you. But uh, as I say, every rule is in, is in a plan because it's, in, it's been justified, um, it's been through a proper process. Um, 
and I'd be very concerned about the removal of rules that were deemed unnecessary because of uh, somebody having a chat with this task force um, rather than through that, that full public process that rules have been through. Sure, and, and it seems like the property investors and the property developers have had a, had a large say up to now in, in some of these reports that have been released. Well, of course, there was the Motu report that, uh, that uh, Minister Smith uh, commissioned, which, well, it was unashamedly only looking at one side of the picture. It, it said, it put a price on what, uh, what the Resource Management Act cost houses, but uh, I don't think anyone would deny that having a quality planned urban environment, there's, there's a huge value in that as well. I mean, nobody wants to be living in a house with a skyscraper right next to them, and, and that's just another side of what the RMA does. Yeah, sure, and that, that's uh, exactly the example I was going to use. It, the, there'll be less consultation with the community and what's being built in their areas. That's right, and there's, there's probably two aspects that, that um, I would like to see retained if any Resource Management Act reforms go ahead. Uh, one is that obviously the environmental goals still need to be in there. It is our environmental protection statute and it still needs to do that. That's not to say that it doesn't consider social and economic outcomes, because it does, it has to. Yeah. Um, but it needs to retain those environmental, um, that environmental focus. And secondly, it needs to retain its public participation process because that's, that's the way it was designed. And to remove that without, without completely changing the Act, um, to provide some other way for people to have their say and feel heard about what happens in their communities and in their country um, would be a, a very sad outcome. Excellent. Thanks very much, Sally, for your comments. Thank you. Cheers. The public meeting is to be held this Thursday, April 30th at the Nelson Electorate Office from 7.30pm. Salisbury Girls School in Richmond won a battle in court two years ago against the Minister of Education's decision to close the school down. The Minister Hikia Prada then agreed that the school, specifically for young women who struggle with mainstream schools, would remain open. However, since then the Ministry, who is the only body to refer students in need, seems to be failing to refer students through the Ministry of Education's intensive wraparound service. The school has maintained a hundred years of operation, focusing on academic, social and life skills, transitioning students into mainstream schools, tertiary courses or into supported working environments, while also running a living and life skills program. Currently the role stands at nine students enrolled this year, which is down from 15 last year and 22 in 2013. This has left those involved with the school fearing that the end is being manipulated for the specialist school. Julia O'Connor, who is the chair of the school board, said that the school were disappointed with the lack of referrals and wanting to see more students referred to it. All reports show Salisbury is an incredibly effective and positive option for students with complex learning needs. So Chrissy Small rang the ministry to speak to someone in the know as to why there was a decline in referrals. However, no one was prepared to comment to us before going to air. This week marks the 20th anniversary of the Cave Creek tragedy with a memorial service held at the Greymouth Polytechnic for families of those killed. Former Nelson man Stephen Hannon, a survivor who was left paralysed by the fall, was at the service and told the crowd he still treasured his memories of his classmates. Also present were Barbara and Ian Stewart from Nelson, who lost their son Evan in the tragedy. Hannon, who they hugged, was one of Evan's best friends. They then laid flowers at the Rock Memorial in the Polytechnic's grounds. The disaster occurred on 28th of April 1995 when a scenic viewing platform in the Paparoa National Park on the South Island's west coast collapsed, resulting in the deaths of 14 people. The victims, 13 of whom were university students, fell 40 metres onto the rocks below. Four students survived the collapse with serious injuries. The tragedy was totally avoidable and resulted in wide criticism of the national government and its policies towards funding and management of the conservation estate. Dennis Marshall, the Minister of Conservation, eventually resigned. After the Commission of Inquiries report came out, the Commission said the root causes of the collapse were systemic problems in the Department as a whole, noting that the Department was seriously underfunded and under-resourced. The Commission found that the Department had not been given sufficient resources to meet its requirements without cutting corners. The police report into the tragedy mysteriously vanished, leaving the victim's family without anyone to be held accountable. 
Eventual changes in New Zealand law, following a change of government, allowed for government departments to be held criminally liable for inadequate building practices in the same way as non-government organisations. We leave you with some images from the tragedy and this week's commemoration. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Discover the Belgrove Tavern just 20 minutes south of Richmond on State Highway 6. A restaurant, functions, weddings, barbecue, a garden bar with lots of room for kids. Come and see us. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonne covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. JKR. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Yeah, I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Friends of Flora AGM is on Tuesday the 12th of May at 7pm at the Motoaka Sports Pavilion in Pass Street. 
adjacent to Memorial Park. Sit and Be Fit is on at the Victory Community Centre Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10am at the Victory Community Church, 238 Upper Vanguard Street. School terms only. Fun while you get fitter, work at your level. For more information, please contact Shirley on 547 1433 or 021 121 8023. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. For more information you can contact Jan on 546 9057 or 027 4577 On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, Thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Social networking is all the rage on the internet. And millions of people all over the world visit one of the many social media sites every day, like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A new social network that allows you to get paid for posting pictures. This platform brings e-commerce and social media together in one place and makes it possible to make money by sharing your content online. The system is very simple to use whether you log into the website or use the mobile app. How does it work? The website works very much like any other social media with a twist. You can earn money from the content you share. You can increase the opportunity of making additional income by connecting your other social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All you need to do is learn three simple steps. Snap it, tag it and share it. Sign up today, http colon forward slash forward slash kiwi1.igrowtour.com Rats, stoats and possums are killing our native birds and reptiles. You can stop this tragedy. The Brook Waimarama Sanctuary is building a pest proof fence which will allow native wildlife to flourish and spread into our lives. Help us preserve our native wildlife. Your support is needed now. You can personally or as a group sponsor a fence post for as little as $100, including the legacy of a personalised plaque. Go to thebrooksanctuary.org or give us a call. And be part of this exciting community project. The Brook Waimarama Sanctuary, returning nature to the Nelson region. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Eighty-eight point one, the shed.
in your step and let's light up the world and shine like an orange sunset we then goodbye as we drove up the road and just see complain as she carries love Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob, 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonneau covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Discover the Belgrove Tavern just 20 minutes south of Richmond on State Highway 6. A restaurant, functions, weddings, barbecue, a garden bar with lots of room for kids. Come and see us. 